Welcome to the Jesuit Institute. The Jesuit Institute has a number of upcoming events which we would like to draw your attention to. From Friday, the 1st of April to Sunday, the 3rd of April, I am leading a retreat here at the Institute on one of the most influential spiritual seekers and writers of the last century, Trappist monk Thomas Merton. Merton was in many ways a restless soul as he searched for love, for meaning and purpose. The retreat will try to give you an experience of the monastic rhythm, which includes the praying of part of the monastic office. There are still some places available, so please contact us for more information on the email address that is on your screen. Then, after Easter, I will be leading a retreat on the post-resurrection account in John 21, where Jesus meets his disciples and makes breakfast for them on the beach. This retreat will be at Zinquazi, on the northern coast of KwaZulu-Natal. The center has access to the beach, so we will experience something of what those disciples experienced after the resurrection. There are still some places available, so please get in touch by emailing what is on your screen now. And finally, the Institute will offer an eight-day individually guided silent retreat at St. Dominic's The Bluff in Durban from the 20th to the 29th of May. If you would like to know more about this, contact us too by email. Again, the address is on your screen. Thank you for your support. We look forward to seeing you at one of these retreats. May God bless you. Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Lent. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollard. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And welcome as we celebrate this fourth Sunday of Lent, or Laetare Sunday, as it is called. Laetare rejoicing because we are moving closer and closer to celebrating the resurrection of the Lord. In today's Gospel, we hear the story of the so-called prodigal son or the compassionate father. Let's bring those broken parts of ourselves, those wounded parts of ourselves to the Lord and ask the Lord for his compassion and his mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, where you intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with this prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten towards the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. In those days, the Lord said to Joshua, This day I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. While the sons of Israel were encamped in Gilgal, they kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the month, at evening in the plains of Jericho. And on the next day after the Passover, on that very day, They ate of the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. 
and the manna ceased on the next day, when they ate of the produce of the land. And the sons of Israel had manna no more, but ate of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste Taste and and see that that the Lord is good. I will bless the Lord at all times. Praise of him is always in my mouth. In the Lord my soul shall make its boast. The humble shall hear and be glad. Taste Taste and and see that the Lord is good. Glorify the Lord with me. Together let us praise his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me. From all my terrors he set me free. Taste Taste and see see that that the Lord Lord is good. Look towards him and be radiant. Let your faces not be abashed. The slowly one called, the Lord heard, and rescued him from all his distress. Taste Taste and and see that that the Lord Lord is good. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. I will arise and go to my Father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receives sinners and he eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that falls to me. And he divided his living between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took his journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in loose living. And when he had spent everything, a great famine arose in that country and he began to be in want. So he went and joined himself to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have fed on the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish here with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I'll say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was yet at a distance, his father saw him and had compassion, and ran and embraced him and kissed him. 
And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet, and bring the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and make merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to make merry. Now his eldest son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what this meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has received him safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him, but he answered his father, Behold, these many years I have served you, and I have never disobeyed your command. But you never gave me a kid that I I might make merry with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your living with harlots, and you kill the fatted calf. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to make merry and be glad, for this brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I wonder what your honest picture or image of God is, your, your heartfelt picture or image of God. You know, often when we talk about God, we say that God is love and God is mercy and God is compassion. But when the chips are down and things go wrong in our lives, how often don't we kind of land up in our default position? Why has God done this to me? Somehow we see when things go wrong that God is against us. I want to invite you today to try to put aside perhaps the picture or the image of God that you have and to listen very attentively to Jesus' picture of God and to engage with Jesus' picture of God as best you can. It seems to me that this parable presents us with Jesus' image, Jesus' picture, Jesus' understanding of God. I want you to notice a few things. The first one is, we are told right at the beginning, this boy wants his inheritance. You know, normally you only get inheritance when someone passes on. But he goes to his father and he basically says to him, I wish you were dead. Give me my share of the property. Notice the absolute freedom in that relationship. The boy's freedom to ask and the Father's freedom to give. And then, not just his asking, but his freedom to leave. And we're told he he goes off. And he goes to this foreign country. He goes far, far, far from himself. He loses himself. And he betrays Everything. He betrays his family, his father. He betrays the tradition of his family. He betrays his community. And we're even told that he betrays his religion. He becomes an apostate because, yeah, he's a young Jewish boy who lands up eating the food of pigs, of swine. This is not what good. Jewish boys do. 
And then there's a wonderful line in that gospel where, he's, where we are told, he came to himself and he said, how many of my father's servants have enough bread? Somehow when he was down and out, when there was nothing for him, he finds himself. He's gone far and now he finds himself. He comes to himself. And he begins the journey back home. I want you then to notice the father, the waiting father. That father who is looking, we don't know for how long, for, for days, for weeks, for months, for years at the horizon, waiting to see if that son will return. A picture of longing, a picture of desire. A picture of someone who is wounded and in pain because all he wants is that son to come back. We're told the father saw him at a distance. And notice how wonderfully that text describes the whole of the father. His eyes, his heart, his lungs, his legs, his arms. We're told First of all, that he sees him and has compassion. He sees him with the eyes of compassion. Then we are told that this old man runs, runs. Imagine his heart rate must have gone up. He runs to this boy. He embraces uh, this boy. And we are told that he kisses this boy. There's no room for punishment. There's no room for retribution. We are just given by Jesus an image of compassion. You know, true love is always free and does not have conditions. And that's the image of God that Jesus gives us in this Father. But the father doesn't just stop there. No, notice the other details in that story as well. We are told he embraces the boy, and then he says to his servants, go and fetch the best robes, put a ring on his finger, and kill the fatted calf. A ring is for us a symbol of, of belonging. You, you belong. When people get married, they exchange rings. They belong to each other. It's a symbol of belonging, of unity. This boy is not an outcast, but the father says, despite all that's happened, you belong. You are still going to be given the best that I have. A wonderful picture of God. And then right at the end of that story, the eldest son shows his face. He's not a bad guy, and yet it seems like things are not quite right there. He's kept the rules, he's ticked all the boxes, and yet he lives with a deep anger. He's judgmental. He's unhappy. Because ultimately, it's not about the rules or the laws, but it's about the relationship. And if our image of God is one of just rules and laws and ticking the boxes and keeping those laws, we too stand the risk of showing up like the elder brother, showing up angry, judgmental, and unhappy. Friends, I want to invite you today on this fourth Sunday of Lent to come home, to come home to the image of God that Jesus presents us, not the image that perhaps we've held on to that's kind of been given to us maybe by parents or pastors by teachers, an image 
which is not always a helpful image. I want to invite you today to adopt the image of God that is given to us by Jesus. Can I invite you into that real living relationship with God as Jesus gives us in the person of that Father, the true image of God, the true identity of God. Can I invite you to embrace this image of God that Jesus gives so that we truly do honor God with the picture or the image of God that we hold? Lent invites us to conversion, and perhaps more than anything else, it is our very image or picture of God that needs conversion. Can you come home to Jesus' picture of God? Let's pray together our profession of faith as we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We have heard God's word. Jesus has given us a picture of who God is. Let's now present our prayers to this God of welcome and compassion. For the church, that through its ministry, those who feel estranged from God may come to know and experience the love and mercy of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those who have left the Father's house, the Church, that we would open our hearts and listen to their stories without judging or condemning them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who feel rejected, that God's love will break into their wounded hearts so that they feel loved, accepted, and valued in our communities. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For government leaders, that they would strive to create a society in which all God's children can live in freedom and dignity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For parents, that they would create homes where the children will know that they are loved. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us now bring our own needs to God in silence. For these we pray, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we give you thanks for Jesus, your Son, who reveals who you really are. And knowing that you are a God of welcome and a God of love, we make these prayers through him who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of our lives may be acceptable to God the Almighty Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, you faithfully await the sacred Paschal mysteries with the joy of minds made pure so that, more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity, and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Butti, our Bishop, and all the clergy, and all who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, 
and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray now in the very words that Jesus, who gives us a picture of God, teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, to set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's take a moment to pray for peace in our own hearts, in our communities, and in our world. We pray, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body and blood of Christ, bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, when you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.